Hi, Dave Smith here. So this is the next uh, video in my getting ready for wet plate uh, series. Let me just bring this across a little bit. And you can see what we're talking about here, fixer. Now this is quite a short video, I think, uh, but there are one or two things that I do want to say about fixer. And you can see uh, from this, I'm intending to use uh, Ilford Rapid Fixer. Uh, really any of the Ilford fixers will do if you think about the uh, chemistry, if you're in the dark room of old and you are uh, processing um, film or prints, the chemistry is the same. You've got um, silver halides held in a matrix, so uh, silver iodide, silver bromide, silver chloride, and in uh, papers it's primarily uh, bromides and chlorides. Um, and that's essentially what we've got here. We, you may you remember we salt the uh, collodion. We, we put some, say, potassium iodide, ammonium iodide, cadmium bromide um, into that matrix. And we tend to use iodides and bromides with uh, wet plate. We don't tend to use chlorides. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe that's something for me to investigate later. Um, but essentially it's the same chemistry, so the fixer will work just the same, uh, and indeed it does. But here's the thing, if you go uh, looking at the literature and if you look at other websites and YouTubers that are talking about this, you'll come across um, potassium cyanide uh, as a fixer. And I, yeah, I know what you're thinking, uh, and you're right. Now, potassium cyanide in itself is per perfectly innocuous. But if you, if you allow it to break down, it will um, produce cyanide gas, hy hydrogen cyanide, which is lethal in very, very, very small concentrations. And you talk, I think you're talking about parts per billion. Um, so you definitely don't want to be liberating uh, hydrogen cyanide gas. Now, in fairness, the chances of that are pretty slim. Um, but they do exist and one way to one way to liberate that is to mix a salt with an acid to get an, uh, a neutralization reaction and of course we do have acids you remember that we uh, acidified the silver nitrate and your plate goes into silver nitrate and all of this has to happen whilst uh, whilst everything is still wet so uh, you've got an acidified uh, base there uh, matrix okay uh, and remember that I added nitric acid to mine because you want to pull that pH down to about 4. So that's, that's reasonably acidic. Um, it's not hydrochloric acid acidic, but it is reasonably acidic. Uh, and so then to, uh, to avoid a neutralization reaction when you try to develop your plate, you want to make your um, developer acidic and so we use acetic acid. So the whole thing is, uh, is acidic to start with. Now, when, when you've finished developing, when you get to the point where the plate is developed, you stop development just by rinsing it with uh, water. Uh, and if you rinse it sufficiently, and this is the key, of course, the water will sheet across the surface and um, you can be sure that all the developer is gone. If there's some developer left behind, you get like, it's like it's a bit greasy and you get, uh, you get rivulets of water it, and it's really obvious so you know don't worry about it um, but if there were some developer left there then you, know, you get a, a reaction between the potassium cyanide salt and the uh, and the acid to release uh, hydrogen cyanide gas and that's not something that you want to be doing so you do have to be sure that uh, that that the developers washed off. And as I say, it is really obvious. And plenty of people uh, do use um, potassium cyanide developer. Now the advantages of it are that it, it clears, the, uh, clears the ambrotype or the tintype really quickly. <coughs> some people say that, <coughs> excuse me, some people say that the color tone of the finished uh, article is more pleasing. It's uh, it's kind of more creamy brown than if you use this fixer. Uh, and I, I haven't tested that myself, but I've seen plenty of tests of it, and 
that does seem to be the case. Uh, however, the, the, the differences are slight. The, you, you know, they're, they're, they're tiny and you only really see them side by side. So for me, that meant that there wasn't really uh, enough uh, of a, an advantage to outweigh the, the risks. Now, let me tell you, the risks are minor, but if there is a problem, then the outcomes are extreme. So for, for me, when, I do, when I'm doing my risk assessment, for me, the risk is too great uh, for any advantages that, that you might get. So I'm using Rapid Fixer. Now, you may well prefer to use the potassium cyanide route, um, but one more um, sort of caveat about health and safety is that uh, if, you've got, if you've cut yourself and you get potassium cyanide in it, that's going to be a problem. I'm not sure how lethal that is, but it is going to be a problem. So you don't store potassium cyanide in glass bottles, for example. Uh, and if you're doing this as a hobby and you're doing it at home and uh, you've got uh, children around, well, you know, I think that's, I think that's a problem. So f for me, the, the risks outweigh the advantages. I've performed my risk assessment and my assessment is that potassium cyanide isn't worth the risk and I'm going to use this however small that risk might be. Um, and then of course an additional point is that it's not that easy to get hold of potassium cyanide. You can see I bought a five litre tub of this stuff, no difficulty at all. So that's what I've got to say about developers. I hope that's been of uh, some use, some interest. Um, and if you are getting into this yourself, uh, drop me a note in the comments. Love to hear about your uh, experiences. Uh, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.